In an effort to find the sons of the harpy, Tyrion and Varys explore the streets of Marine disguised as merchants, believing they can do more at street level than inside the Great Pyramid. Upon meeting a woman and her baby, Tyrion offers some money to feed her child. Due to his bad Valyrian, however, she refuses, believing Tyrion intends to eat her baby until Varys corrects her. While pondering their predicament and what Daenerys' absence means to the people of Marine, they witness Zamrush preaching to some of the former slaves to fight for their own freedom instead of relying on Daenerys. After surmising that the Harpies have a leader, Tyrion and Varys encounter several citizens running away from something. Investigating the disturbance, they are shocked to find that the sons of the Harpy have burned every ship in the harbor. Later, in the Great Pyramid, Tyrion learns that the Unsullied have yet to find the person responsible for burning the Myrinese fleet. Astapor and Yunkai have fallen back into the slave trade and Daenerys' remaining dragons haven't been eating since their mother left. Tyrion guesses that they are morose because they are in captivity. When Masande asks how he knows this, he replies, that's what I do. I drink and I know things. Tyrion decides to meet the dragons and free them, knowing they will be better off this way. Accompanied by Varys, Tyrion ventures alone into the catacombs and encounters Viserion and Rhaegal for the first time. Despite their initial hostility towards him, Tyrion remains calm, assuring them he is a friend of Daenerys and only wants to help. He manages to earn their trust and unshackle them, all the while telling them the story of how he wanted a dragon for his name day when asked by his uncle what he'd like for a gift, only to be disappointed by uproarious laughter from his family and the truth from his father, that they'd been extinct for a century. After the dragons depart, Tyrion quickly exits the pit with Varys, asking the eunuch to punch him, in the face, the next time he has a crazy idea. Later, while waiting for Varys as he turns one of the sons of the Harpy's allies to their cause, Tyrion tries to pass the time with Missande and Grey Worm by engaging in small talk and playing one of his drinking games, without success. Once Varys arrives, Tyrion learns that the masters of Yunkai, Astapor and Volantis are collectively funding the sons of the Harpy. In order to intimidate the masters into backing down, Tyrion asks Varys to arrange a meeting with them. Tyrion, Grey Worm, Missande and Varys prepare to meet with representatives of the good masters of Astapor, the wise masters of Yunkai, and the slave trading city of Volantis, who have all arrived by sea. As the diplomatic mission enters the harbor, Grey Worm advocates using military force, though Tyrion reminds him this has already been tried, and this time they must make peace with our enemies. When Tyrion explains that he is able to empathize with slaves because he spent one day as a slave, Missande counters that he has not experienced slavery enough. In the meeting chamber, the emissaries are revealed to be Tyrion's former slave master Yezanzo Kagas, the Yunkai wise master Razdal Mo Eraz, and the Volantine representative Belicho Pinimian. Yezan remarks at how Tyrion, a dwarf slave, has quickly climbed to the top of the Great Pyramid. The slave trading cities offer to give Daenerys and her allies a large amount of money and ships if they leave Slavers Bay. When Masande defends Danny's actions in liberating slaves, Razdal contends that slavery has existed in the region for centuries. After hearing their offer and reminding them there are other ways to make money, Tyrion proposes a counter-offer. While Marine would remain a free city, he offers to give the other cities of Slavers Bay a seven-year time limit to phase out slavery and compensate all slave owners. However, they must end all support for the sons of the Harpy, regardless of their denial of it. He then cautions them that they will not get a better offer. At the meeting's conclusion, Tyrion gives them a trio of prostitutes and time to consider his offer. Tyrion and his entourage are later confronted by a group of former slaves in the marine throne room. A freedman demands to know when Daenerys will return, while another is appalled at the idea of Tyrion negotiating with slave traders. Tyrion insists he is doing his best to rule the city in her absence while they wait. Instead, the freedmen refuse to listen to the foreign dwarf and look to Grey Worm and Masande for reassurance. Despite their misgivings, they both publicly back Tyrion in front of the freedmen. In private, Tyrion assures Masande and Grey Worm that he is serving Daenerys' interest by taking advantage of the master's own arrogance, but that he cannot end slavery overnight. Grey Worm, however, warns Tyrion that the slavers cannot be reasoned with and will most likely take advantage of him instead, since they already do it for a living. Nevertheless, the situation in Marine begins to stabilize, with almost no incidents involving the freedmen or sons of the harpy, 
though Tyrion reminds them they need to convince the Myronees that everything has been done with Daenerys' blessing, as the Masters could use Tyrion and Varys' foreign status against them to fully reclaim Slaver's Bay. To accomplish this, Tyrion invites Kinvara, High Priestess of the Red Temple of Volantis, to negotiate spreading the word of Daenerys's achievements. To Tyrion's surprise, Kinvara appears to fully agree with supporting Tyrion's goals, believing that Daenerys is the prince that was promised. Varys is more skeptical, however, being suspicious of any practitioners of magic, and points out that Melisandre had already promised the same to Stannis Baratheon, who was ultimately defeated and killed. Kinvara counters that the Lord of Light's human followers occasionally make mistakes, then shuts him down with knowledge of his castration. Kinvara then assures Tyrion that she will send the preachers and priests best suited to the task at hand. When the Red Priests arrive at Marine to preach about Daenerys, Tyrion and Varys are debating if their presence can maintain order throughout the city while walking through the markets. Afterwards, Varys tells Tyrion that he is leaving on a secret expedition because Daenerys will need more allies, before Tyrion proclaims to Varys that he is the most famous dwarf in the world. In the Great Pyramid, Tyrion wishes to celebrate with Missandei and Grey Worm for the resurgence of Marine and to honor their queen. Their celebration is cut short when a large fleet of slaver ships lay siege to the city. As the slavers continue to bombard Marine, Tyrion allows Grey Worm to assume command. Grey Worm proposes that the Unsullied must not go to the beach, preferring to wait until the slavers enter the Great Pyramid. At that moment, they hear movement on the roof. When they go to investigate, they discover that Daenerys has returned on her dragon Drogon. The following day, Tyrion explains the events in Marine during her absence to Daenerys. Despite the fact that they are under siege by the Master's fleet, he believes that his success in bringing about a resurgence of a slaveless Marine is the reason for their attack because the masters could not let such an example succeed for fear that their slaves could rise up. Daenerys declares that she will destroy the masters' armies, kill them all, and destroy their cities. Tyrion disapproves and explains the similarities between this plan and the one her father had for King's Landing when the Lannisters were at his door. Instead, he proposes a different solution. Accompanied by Grey Worm and Missandei, Tyrion and Daenerys meet with the slave masters Razdal, Yezan, and Belicho to parley. Believing victory is near, the slave masters demand that Daenerys and Tyrion surrender Missandei and the Unsullied to their masters, and her three dragons to be slaughtered before leaving Slaver's Bay. Danny rejects their terms and orders Drogon, Viserion, and Rhaegal to burn the Slaver's fleet. As Danny leads the counter-attack on the back of Drogon, Tyrion chastises the slave masters for breaking his pact and demands that they surrender one of their own to be executed as punishment. When Razdil and Belicho try to offer up Yezan, Tyrion orders Grey Worm to kill the two masters. However, he spares Yezan so Yezan can spread the word of Daenerys's power. Meanwhile, Danny's Dothraki horde wipes out the resurgent sons of the Harpy. After the battle, Tyrion is present at the Great Pyramid while Danny holds an audience with Yara and Theon Greyjoy, who have just arrived in Marine with most of the Iron Fleet. Knowing Theon, Tyrion chides him for mocking his height back at Winterfell and for the alleged murders of Bran and Rickon Stark. A penitent Theon reiterates that he has paid for his crimes though Tyrion is incredulous given that Theon is standing there. Yara offers to provide Daenerys with a hundred ships if she helps them to defeat her uncle Euron Greyjoy and recognizes the independence of the Iron Islands. Tyrion protests that if the Iron Islands gain independence, then the rest of the kingdoms will likely make that demand as well. Danny states that they are welcome to try, and agrees to Yara's terms, provided that the Ironborn end all reaving and piracy of the mainland. When Yara begrudgingly accepts, Tyrion indicates his approval of the alliance, as Daenerys has negotiated a strong position for herself. In preparation for the invasion of Westeros and entering its politics, Tyrion advises Daenerys to end her relationship with Dario and leave him marine with the rest of the Second Sons, which she does. Tyrion attempts to console her on her loss of the relationship but admits he is not good at consoling. She agrees but she says she is more bothered that it was so easy for her to let Dario go than by the actual loss of the relationship. Tyrion tells her that Dario is not the only man she ever loved and definitely will not be the last. He also implies that she already has the needed mindset for the terrifying game she is about to play with the Lords of Westeros. Tyrion goes on to admit that for years he has believed in nothing but, in the months in her service, he has come to believe in Daenerys and that he is ready to live again. Touched. 
Daenerys presents him with a replica of the hand's brooch and formally names him Hand of the Queen. Moved to near tears, Tyrion kneels before her. Some time later, Tyrion stands with Daenerys on the flagship of her massive armada, looking ahead to returning to Westeros.